I about blown off myself. <laughs> Just about blown off myself. Let me jack this down a little bit now. I want to get a picture of him taking it. I'll get out of there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They even staged the scene for you there. That's they? right. They did good. I didn't know you had to come <laughs> <laughs> well, You never know. We have some more coming. Are you all in or? No, they're they're they okay. should be coming. Wait. My uh, just dink around. With sure, help yourself. You bet. Now the CCB has been approved to remove the 250, so all you'll have is a 90. Okay. And that's all we brought today was a 90. Out of for you. It's nice today. Last time I was up here, there weren't as many buildings out of. I know. <laughs> They just keep growing. Yeah, IBM, when we started this, I was documenting all that. We used to come up here and, and shoot it for resolution. We just yeah. shoot those grates over there, and boy, uh -huh. when it was out, you could really tell it on those grates. Can I get trained? We've got sufficient. Yeah, help yourself. If you need help, I'm gonna let you do it. Viewfinders. Uh, yeah. Yep. Stop. Shutter oh, yeah, speed. Yeah. What film you got in here, James? That, that's is the 5017. That's ASA 64. Yeah, the one. The one place I was thinking it might be worth, uh, I'm not even sure you would need to change the focus on this thing, but with the telescope up at appendage deploy, I think in the 90, uh, could be a pretty good shot. Oh, and yeah. as we separate It'd be away, fantastic. Lauren, how far, is, uh, how long is it till we're up about, not, oh. just coming up on 90 above and we're looking at the telescope down against the earth? Because be, that'd be uh, the other good place for 25 to 30 minutes. Transition time up to up almost there. directly above. That'd be the there. other sequence once we're about 100 yeah. feet or so back and starting with the. You know, but I bet you infinity is still fine for that. And well, we'll, we'll look at the to. depth of field, and if you're going to get. Against Earthshine, it's going to be at least f11. Oh, yeah. So, so I bet you that we'll. I'll have to pull out the books, but I think infinity's still going to be all right for that. We'll, yeah, we'll go into. I'll talk to Jeff and get him to, you know, give you a setting for that. We may be going just towards the Terminator, or just getting right towards the Terminator at about that 20 or 25 mm -hmm. minute point. That's where we actually get it released compared to orbit new. Uh -huh. Yeah. This amount of now you're gonna have I'd go to F eleven. Did you put thick base in this one? Good, okay. Because we don't have a whole lot of thin base, but you will have the thin base in yours, which will give you two seventy or somewhere thereabouts, so you should have plenty of film. And I've got the uh, gel filter holders ordered for the Nikon. Uh, the 180 f2.8 seems to be a, a real good lens. It's relatively fast, and you still get some magnification on it. Uh, what was your, what was it's a one, 180 millimeter f2.8. Uh, you can. That's no way to go in a, we're going a photo bag without any trouble. We can just add it. It's not a big deal. Okay. That's about the size tripod you gotta have with that big a camera. Well, LBJ needed, uh, needed his technical rationale, which was the uh, <laughs> access to deep draft barge. Yeah. Oh, I think that's hey the guys, only time we've used it. Isn't it? That stuff. <laughs> I think that's the only time we've used it too. Yeah, it's the only two times. Yeah. I remember the day they floated that in. I think I came down to see it when they brought it in. Yeah. Trying to make sure the park was in here. Oh, the yeah. little bit of it I can I see. Yeah. It's kind of hidden. How many are we supposed to take? A couple. Yeah, two or three, four. Okay. I think there's enough for about six or eight of everybody. Well, I'm gonna take my six. There, go ahead. <laughs> Just 
tell me what it is. <laughs> Try that. Oh, we're about Pecos all the way to New Orleans. I, I think it's a, I don't know. Yeah, it's a beautiful shot. Fantastic. And the funny part was that you could you can tell distinctively where the Balconis escarpment is. And you you can fly over it and can't even see it, but for some reason I think it's vegetation or anything. You can tell right where that sucker is. Oh, I got to take the little circle and make sure it's clear of the roof. Just line it up on uh, the dark part, part of the shore? South Shore Harbor, yeah. Right in the corner window there. Okay. <laughs> what are we looking at? <laughs> what am I not doing? I think you're getting either some sunlight, some sky now, if in I there, take it up into the, you know, If I take it up to the clouds, I yeah, get, yeah. get 5.6. Oh, I wasn't doing that. I was just lining right up on the on the side of the building there. I wonder if we're looking at the same building. The South, yeah, the South Shore Harbor. It's the only big building over there. Oh, okay. The hotel. I got it right in the green windows in the corner. The circle around them. Yeah. Yeah, I was going lower so that I tried to get the if bottom, maybe get, bottom you maybe of the get circle. If I go down into the marina. Yeah. Sure hope we get some nice pictures. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you yeah. will. I guarantee you. You stick it out the window. You'll get nice pictures with it. It's pointed it's out the window. We got what? Two, two magazines. Yeah. Two magazines. You'll have two, and they'll have about 270 exposures each. So you got plenty of film. Just take pictures. Don't, you know, don't worry about whether you should take it or not. Just take them. But you should have plenty of film. Did I hear you saying something about a filter for this? No. No. Not no. no we're talking about a different subject. For the Nikon. We got couple of gel filters. I didn't remember one from last No, time. there's there's a haze filter on there, but you don't have to do anything with it. It just keeps the lens clean for all the reason. Okay. The spacecraft windows is good enough haze filter, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. All right, well, I'll have these processed, and I'll get them to Judy, and she'll bring them and show them to you. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for coming okay. over. Okay. Thank you. If you need, a, need another session or anything, okay. give me a Thank holler, and we'll set it up again. How about one on the top of Mauna Loa? That'd be nice. I don't know if NASA paid my way there or not, though. <laughs> oh, you can work that job for us, too. Yeah, primarily because it was, uh, you know, seventh, eighth, ninth magnitude stars are what typically you have accurate positions for because they're easy and there's yeah. enough of them and it's straightforward to do. Okay. Uh, 16 millimeter class, it's the same as the 35, I'm going to go with the DNC and we'll put it together and we'll, we'll pretend like we're going to take pictures. And the last thing we do is film mode because it's kind of complicated. Um, so the very last thing is film loading. If you want to load it, it's fine, I'll load it first. If you don't want to load it or you want to wait till you go home, check one out, that's just what you do. First you're going to start in the generic checklist. If you haven't looked through the photo feed checklist in a long time, here now we have what specific book and a generic book. The malfunctions are here, and on the 16 stuff, this camera does break. So there's a few things in here where we have hardware problems instead of operator errors. And um, we've tried to put malfunctions right close to the picture so you can take it. Um, it's pretty straightforward. The 16 millimeter camera is uh, not exactly your instamatic. Um, and people just get a little bit more confused on this one. Um, 
you know, were you here in the days of the DAC cameras? <laughs> this is an Instamatic. <laughs> Anyway, that's all there is in this book. Uh, there's the same thing, malfunctioning pictures for all the systems that we have. Uh, anything uh, that flies mm, pretty often and is, and is in our inventory is in here, like in a barometer, spot meter, stuff of that sort, in the same sort of section in the flight supplement. Okay? So that's, that's that. Okay. Also, there isn't a workbook on this camera that is still in place, but I did bring you a 35 workbook and 70 workbook ahead and start reading, although they're out of seven, I got three of them, before we um, get into that hunt. Okay, I've taken off all the uh, attachments to this camera, so we can just start from scratch here, set it 45 degrees, so it's cut out in like a pie, and it turns. So one minute you're viewing, one minute you're taking a picture, one minute you're viewing, one minute you're taking a picture. Pretty slow for me. If you look in here, <laughs> you can see the mirror turning around. And actually, um, it, uh, you can see some flicker if you're looking, but most of the time you just forget that's even happening. So that's how it's through the lens. Just yeah. the diopterative, Steve, and, and watch the screen get sharp and not so sharp. Yeah, I did that. Okay. Um, the other thing is, you know, the mirror turns. Well, when you turn the camera off, it always continues as much as it needs to to um, put the mirror in the viewing position. If you pick up a camera and somebody's messing with it or the battery is dead during the shooting, you can't see through it, your mirror is just not adjusted. To get it back in the right position, you can physically turn it or put a fresh battery on there, turn the camera on and then off and it'll reposition that down. Um, but uh, most of the time it's going to be a uh, problem. It's pretty heavy and you put all this stuff on there and then you put film in there. The camera in the bag and everything is about 30 pounds. Nine in the morning, and it's about four at four o'clock. Changes. Actually, it starts at 100 at seven, and it goes to a <laughs> low at nine, and it goes back up to the day. Techniques. Why are I getting it to run here? Okay, are we in standby? Yeah. In standby or run? Yeah, but there you have it. Just walks I didn't off. see it move, but maybe it. Maybe it did. You didn't have DAX, I don't think. On no, it was gone. Oh, so I got to actually do both of them yeah. on one flight. <laughs> it was night. Nice. It was a pain to use the DAX. Out of line on the battery capabilities. And with the day uh, six. Oh, we got another left day. Day person. seven EVA. We didn't get any EVA on. Bad. <laughs> Which has the automatic motor. Yeah, so it's not coupling. So then, and the uh, exposure LED is coming from the same thing, right? That's not an exposure LED. You mean the little red line? Yeah. Okay, there's a red line in there, in the finder, and it's a motor speed light. Okay. When you first oh, turn the camera on, yeah. it should come it's on the and then go off. Yeah. And when you turn the camera off, it should actually flick at your hand. Yeah. Um, that means that the motor's not up to 24 frames a second yet. It gets up there real quick. If you have a bad battery, that light can stay on constantly and it tells you you have a bad battery and therefore your motor speed is dropping. But if you hit it and lock it down, the light that go goes out. out within a If that light doesn't go out, there's something wrong. You're off speed. And, and it could be because you have a film drag. It, it could be light. that you have a bad battery. It's a run but not so fast. So. Anyway, okay, so now let's see. We put the camera together. We've adjusted the diopter, we've put a battery on, we've attached a magazine and a hand grip. We know how to do all that. The next thing we're going to talk about is lenses. And this system has two lenses. And um, the lenses are quite different. Some people like one, some people like the other. Um, you remember I told you yesterday about lighting lenses with no focus? In okay, this is one right here. This lens is a 5.9. It's extremely uh, wide angle. Only control on this is aperture. And there's pros and cons. You can focus is really easy because it's, it's point and shoot. But there's no auto your meter needle goes. Mm -hmm. So it goes like this. Down, you're overexposed. Why they did that, I don't know. If it's up, it's underexposed. If it's 
backwards. And you can turn your little wires on. Crazy. Um, but anyway, if you use a 5.9, focus is really easy, but it, exposure is not really easy. So you have to constantly adjust here. Now, if you're in the mid-deck, once you adjust it, um, it's pretty much going to be the same no matter what you shoot. But on a flight deck with windows and stuff like that, it gets a little bit more uh, tricky. Say, there's my metering. Get your metering right, and then you can, then you can run. Um, no focus involved whatsoever. Um, so I'd like to pass that around and have you operate the meter. And while you're doing that, I'm going to talk about this other lens. The zoom lens is extremely popular. Um, first off, I'm taking the, the orange filter off. And well, what in the heck is this orange filter for? The strange thing that we do is that we fly tungsten film, okay? So if we shoot daylight, we have to color correct it. Makes sense. Also, with this zoom lens, our smallest aperture is f16, okay? Well, we have 148, so we're overexposing. So not only is this color correction, but it's sunglasses. And it cuts down as a neutral density and it's a good exposure. Um, obviously, if you were to come into the cabin, you would want to take this off. Because almost all of the cabin photography is wide open. There's just not much light in there. Unless you have lots of sunshine streaming in, it's, it's, uh, you need all the light you can get. So you always take this off for inside. He's so you can say, well, put it on, go outside, or off. These are sunglasses and stuff with macro. Okay, so you focus and then you have your zoom ring here. Um, if you want to go into macro, push the macro button and you're in the macro. If you want to get back out of macro, push the macro button and you're back out of macro. The normal area is the normal zoom range and the focus. You can only go into macro if you had something really special. We'll, we'll talk about that when we get the camera in your hand. The aperture ring is a little bit strange in that it moves from F16 to F2. But if you push this button, I can go into auto. So I'm in auto exposure. And so I don't have to adjust exposure at all. The camera takes care of that. All I do is zoom and focus. It's real easy. Um, and as soon as we get through looking at the camera, we'll attach this and, and talk about that. The uh, manual exposure on that again is a sort of live from it. it shows a plus. It means you should plug it down. Okay, if it shows it shows a plus, it means it, means it means it needs more light to open up. It means you are overexposed. It's the situation that you are. It doesn't tell you what to do. It tells you excess of light. Excuse me. You know, um, the breezy amount of light coming in? Overexposed is down and underexposed is over. So with that lens, as you adjust the aperture, you're going to get the needle right in the center. If you point the camera up at the light, the needle should drop to the overexposed area, and then you readjust for that play with that. Inside the finder you see some areas, um, TV safe areas. You know, when they take this film stuff, they transfer it to video. So you want to keep your image within these little lines here. That's your TV safe area. Um, a caption for that one. <laughs> I know there's a star up there. I know there is. <laughs> what we thought we'd do is, uh, is not really concentrate on the specifics of the camera for fear of getting into kind of negative training situations. So uh, if you just bear with us, we thought the real objective both in this session and the bit one in building nine is for you to take some pictures that we can go into the theater and look at. So uh, we won't talk too much about equipment, we'll talk a bit about photography. So I turn it over to James and David to help them and, and uh, charge on ahead.
Well, the first the first thing we're going to do is, is have a look at the, at the tripod since that's going to be your zero G simulator for the day. Uh, and we've got two controls on the pan and tilt. If you want to tilt it, we have a lock here, and then just we'll lock it wherever you want to put it. And then we have a pan pan lock in the front, the same sort of lever right in the front. So anytime you want to move the camera, just unlock those and, and put it wherever you want it and lock them back and stay right there. And so we'll go through all all four of those today. Uh, we'll talk some about exposure, uh, how to use the, the light meter out here and, and be able to relate that to what the film is going to record and, and the sort of range of values you'll be able to record. And, and of course, if we shoot some and we'll, we'll compare lenses when you see things in the sun, since that's apparently you'll be looking a lot in the sun with, with HST. So we want to get you familiar with what the different lenses will do in that situation. And we got a pretty good contrast range going over here with the Saturn V. So that's some of the things we'll be doing out here today. And then we'll go on into the CCT later in the afternoon and do some interior. Anything you want to add to that, Mr. Douglas? Oh, I'm just, just going to pipe in once in a while. And keep the action. The main action in the Omnimax when you're shooting with this. So you try to keep it in a really down in the low part of the frame. Otherwise, you know, people have having to look around and, and strain their neck to, to see what's going on. Right. If, mid, if you can, range. yeah. That's, if you if, can, if, that's if you exactly. Have, if you have a chance to do that. If, if, yeah, if you got that choice, you can do it. Yeah. yeah. That's Generally speaking, if you keep things in the more in the center part and not too high up, that's a kind of a good ground, a good rule of thumb for almost anything. But lots of shots we got no choice. You can film right. frame. The, the, well, our normal pattern has been for everybody to take at least one, and if possible. What, two shots, I think, while you're here. Why don't we try for everybody taking two? Think about a shot you'd like to take here, here, wherever. We can move the camera to wherever you want. And take and think of a couple of different lenses. One shot with one lens, another shot with another. And we'll try to move it around and give everybody two turns to uh, to shoot something. So you choose the, you just look around and find something you'd like to shoot. So what you'll want to do is probably zoom this in if it's not zoomed in. find that little switch, that's for sure. That shutter switch. Yes. <laughs> kind of need to do that. There you go. Where's this knob again? Okay, that knob is moving a little element group in, in here. On the flight camera, you're actually pushing on a lever, yeah, which okay. is attached to the element group. For the, but uh, with this, we couldn't get that finder with us. Did he ask the guy that wears glasses? <laughs> It looks focused to me. So what you want to do is the, you want the lines to, are supposed to be crisp, you want to rotate right? this. See, I haven't I haven't bothered his adjustment because it, if the black lines are crisp. Yeah. Are you zoomed in with that finder? I'm zoomed in. Yeah. And I can see little furry. You know, see when I say they're crisp. Little furry yeah. what? Creature? Yeah. <laughs> little furry creatures. <laughs> Hairy legged little. Okay, so then. So then. <laughs> so I would not bother it. I would leave it there. So now you're in a position to decide whether or not the lens is in focus. Okay. You know what, Glenn? I have a focal distance gain. Well, we'll go into that a bit later, too. Okay. What we have, in fact, you can do is you can, if you focus about. Shoot it, and then, okay. then we, can all, okay. we can all vote on it, and the thing is going to go change it. Yeah. <laughs> so you get repetitive practice. Graham's being interviewed, Philip is in the background, and she's the governor of the state of Texas or something, so we want to make sure <laughs> that we can care less about this rock. This lens, once you get it past F8, though, everything is pretty, well, pretty hard to mess up. That's the other thing you just want to you 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 set where. your lens up and set your frame and, and <clears throat> do your focusing with the I lens got, wide uh, open. About yeah. F11 on the spot meter. I don't know, Charlie, that looks but now, see, we didn't we didn't change the f-stop. No, we didn't. No, we, it's wide open. I, I just I just wanted to make the point that when you're gonna when you're gonna do this process, that, that you check that the lens on the camera is wide open because it's everything's just way harder if you okay. have less yeah. light okay. going through. I want I want to close this thing down and just have and just have a look at the difference of looking through there. there there's wide open. Now if you tried to focus like that, see oh, yeah. see how kind of trouble you'd be in. Yeah. And 
that's 22. Here's eight. That's halfway open. So even if there, it's it's real difficult to do. So when you first grab it to focus, just make sure it's wide open. We're not going to get any quick shots here. Well. Well, targets of opportunity. Not today. Is that what you're saying? On orbit. <laughs> on orbit. By then you'll be so fast it won't matter. Okay. What's that say? Your, your critical focus is one forward right hand there, Bruce. Well, the, the little one. Yeah. The first. yeah. Okay. Is it magic? You can you can use that to zoom in on that, that little that circle. Oh, it's looking at the white. Your focus is Exposed to the exterior and just just boost what you can if you want some detail. In fact, this shot is very difficult to do the problem because the uh, to get a really in the print they fudged it a bit because they can work with the print, mm -hmm. but uh, on the on the film it's always been hard to print it. So you got some reasonable yeah, blue yeah. in the earth and reasonable detail in the target. Mess it up for me, David. Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. A little bit too wide. Yeah. I don't even know if this is open up yeah. or down. Exactly. I haven't used this camera. Exactly. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I this is an example of just about the ultimate range that you can. Yeah, you want to set up wide open. Stop down and I like it. <laughs> the fedora suits you. Yeah, I think so. I need it. Uh, they can get the things, you know, there will be a, they'll, 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 they'll be a startup <laughs> checklist for you all right. on the camera, and the power just goes, uh, you get connected uh, up, and if the LTP is turned on. Actually, uh, slack is, is a, <laughs> what happens Normally, is, I think, there's, there's, a big, there's a big roll of film here, weighs 10 pounds. Sometimes, like, the next yeah, that'll, guy who shoots that'll after that'll you take this shot, what will happen probably is there'll be a little extra film, but once the camera stops, that, that weight will carry around a little bit further. So you're just trying to take the slack out. Of that, of that, so it doesn't start up and then like hit, that, hit that yeah. stop. Yeah, it's like it's like yeah. And it's, I'll, I'll put some in there so you can just feel about your play. Come around the corner uh, in a little bit. <laughs> we don't have one with us because we're in orbit. <laughs> but it's going right there. Just a minute. We're back yeah. again. Are you, you want to be? You want to be all unlocked? On, yeah. Then you're. Then you're That's good. Everything you're all unlocked and ready to go. Yeah, 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 it's 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 James. Yeah. Give him a little more room. Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Okay. There we go. Okay. Since Bruce and Kathy are EVA right now, and I want to yeah. get the telescope, yeah. then I'm going to, I think I'll go ahead and focus on Bruce. Yeah, it's all the way in, and I've got the thing here. Magnifier. Yeah, Keep them low in the frame. Okay. How, how far up the frame is my head right now? Your head is right in the middle. So Bruce's head... Bruce's, Bruce's head is uh, right below the bottom of the teeth. Yeah. 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 Yeah.